Hello and welcome to tutorial 124 multi charts version. Back in tutorial 124, what I did was created a program that ensured that some a text label was kept visibly the same distance from a price bar, however much the uh, the scale of the chart changed. And the purpose of doing that was not necessarily because it was a super useful thing to do, but because it demonstrated quite a few interesting programming techniques. And uh, one of the Goldpass members said to me, would it be possible to do something similar for uh, that would work with multicharts? And the answer is uh, yes, it is. And that's what I've done here. But the, uh, the previous program used a lot of the new TradeStation object-oriented capabilities, including things like the timer and the charting host and so on to detect when the uh, the chart was changed. Um, in this particular case, we're not going to be using those. Clearly, we're going to be doing a more simple, using a more simple way of doing it. And what we're actually going to be doing is just simply measuring the highest and the lowest price on the chart. And then when the price ticks, we're not using the timer, so we need to wait until the, uh, the price moves. The program goes and it will detect if, so I'm just scrolling along the chart and you'll see now the program has detected that the height has changed if it detects that what it then does is it goes through all the text objects drawn on the chart and adjusts their position so that they take up the same fraction of the the visible chart so if we would just keep on moving back here see if we can see any text objects. These have been drawn incidentally when there has been a hammer. So you see here we have one and uh, you saw that that moved when we uh, when we scrolled here because it needs to stay equidistant away from the bars. And uh, the distance there is actually set using a input as a number of ticks. So in this particular case you probably want to adjust that say to two. And again if I just move chart you should see that will move and the the number there will be updated as well okay so let me just demonstrate how I've done this and this is using it's achieving a similar result but it's using quite different techniques so let's just uh, ignore the variables and the input for the moment but uh, what the program does when it first runs we've got a one statement it clears the print lock and then it measures the difference between the uh, highest price on the chart and the lowest and it does that using the get app info if you're not familiar with that just simply right click and look at the definition what it then does is it calculates the chart fraction and I've included a check here just to make sure that last price height is not evaluating uh, as zero and then I'm saying the chart fraction is equal to the num ticks which is the input that we just uh, set on the chart multiplied by the tick val or rather multiplied by tck and that is equal to the min move over the price scale in, in other words the tick value so it does that once and then what it does on every tick it recalculates the uh, price uh, chart height highest price minus lowest and i've called that current price height so it recalculates that the first time it uses the variable last price height and ongoing we store that value in current price height and then what we do is say if it's the last bar on the chart and last price height is different from current price height so the first time this runs it's comparing the price height that was originally on the chart when we started as we go along we update the last price height uh, variable so we know if it changes between ticks so what we then do is we calculate the distance on the chart that the text objects need to be away from the price so that we've got a consistent distance uh, whatever the scale of the chart and we do that here simply equal to chart fraction times the last price height and then we we go through the uh, the text object now in this particular case instead of using the the newer trade station objects we're using the sort of legacy text objects and we we loop through it by first of all getting the first text object and uh, this number here incidentally means a text object that um, has been well let's just go ahead and look at this and uh, you can see there the 
text object parameters. So we could right click on that and you'll see all the various allowable values. And what we're using one, so we're using, it's either a trend line or text object created by the current analysis technique. Okay, so we get the first, and then we just go through, we go into a while loop. So each time for each text object, we find what the, uh, the, the low of the bar is that that text object is associated with. And um, that is essentially equal to the value of the text object plus the price distance from low, which is something that uh, we recalculate each time. So we can go back and find out what the low was when we originally placed the object. Then we find the new position. So the new position is going to be lower the bar minus the chart fraction times the current price height. So that's the new distance. And then we have to set the location of the text object using text underscore set location and also set the string and the set location. It needs uh, as inputs the, the ID of the text object we're moving. It needs the date, the time, and the new position. And it knows the date and the time by getting those from the current text object. So we just say text, get date. We put in the text ID that gets us the date of the uh, text object we're looking at at the moment. Same for the time. And then the position, that's something that we've just calculated here. And having done that, we, uh, we go and we get the next text object and we continue on the while loop. And then the last thing we do in this uh, this little section is we set the last price height to be equal to the current price height. So that each time we're just comparing what the uh, the height was last tick, what it is this tick, has it changed? If it's changed, then we go through and uh, we move the text objects. So then we've got the functionality that detects the hammers and that's just standard trade, standard trade station function. And uh, we say, if there is a hammer, then we draw the, well, we actually, first of all, find the, the initial value, which is L minus chart fraction times current price height, which is very similar to the calculation here. It's just the initial placing of the object. And uh, we place that using text new, but then we do it on the current bar. So date, time, then L minus the uh, chart fraction times current height, which is the same value as this, but that's where we're positioning the text object and then we use the label which is the, uh, the hammer text and just for the purposes of this uh, program what I've done is that uh, label reflects the current position just so that you can see when the text object moves. So this program I'm uh, going to be making it available both as an ELD and PLA. This will run on multi charts and uh, also if you're a Gold Pass member then you will be able to download these at no cost. Anyway, hopefully you have found this useful. And if you have any questions, then please email me and I will do my best to respond. Thank you.